Welcome to Midday Manor. I give honor today to Bishop Suffolk and Bishop C. Sean Tyson and First Lady Krista Tyson, here to Pastor and First Lady of Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church. We are very glad that you took time to come to Midday Manor to worship with us today online. God bless you. Today, I'm going to speak about a subject, the significance of servanthood. Look at Matthew 23, 11. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Do you have a desire to know and to understand what a servant is? Well, today, for those who have been looking for greatness, God told me to tell you, you have been looking in the wrong direction. Your greatness is not in your success. Your greatness is not in the things that you accomplish. Your greatness is not in the things that you desire to do. When the saints are going through different situations, they will come to you because they know you are a servant of the Lord. When saints are having trials and tribulations and hard times, they will become looking for you because they know that you have been chosen before the foundation of the world to be a servant of the Lord. You have chosen to be in the midst of servanthood. And it is your responsibility to help them, whether it's a natural problem they're having or whether it's a spiritual problem they're having they're going to come looking for you because you have been chosen to be in servanthood. We were created by the almighty God. He created us to obey his will and to fulfill his purpose. Every one of us has been called by the almighty God and given a purpose and a calling and a charge to do what he wants us to do. He created us to obey his will and to fulfill the purpose that he called us to do. We did not evolve through evolution, which is called the Darwin's theory of evolution which states that all people on the earth evolved from apes. Darwin himself said, there's no truth to this. It's only a theory. There are no facts. Though it is being taught in schools and colleges all over, Darwin himself said, I have no facts to back this up. It's only a theory. Therefore, let us go to Genesis, for God created man out of the dust of the ground. And when God created the earth and the Garden of Eden, the Bible says, believe it or not, though he is the almighty God, God himself said, I have a problem. You heard what I said. When God created the earth and the Garden of Eden, the Bible says, God had a problem. God needed a man to till the ground. Genesis 2, 5. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And here's the problem. And there was no man to till the ground. God said, I have a problem. God needed a man to till the ground. 
God needed a servant. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. There he put the man whom he had formed. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress and to keep it. God said, I found a servant to do my will. The man had been given his purpose and his assignment by God to be a servitor, to be the servant of God. Because man belongs to God, God gave him his assignment. Serving is to work. Let us consider some of those who have served in the Lord's house. Let's start with Samuel. Samuel ministered unto Eli in the Lord's house before the Lord called him to be a prophet. For those who work in the house of God, whether it's mopping the floor or being an usher, whatever you do in the Lord's house, when God uses you in, your, in his house, God may have a greater purpose for you. Samuel, all he did was help Eli, whatever he needed. But one day, Samuel heard the voice of the Lord. And God spoke to him. And God said unto Samuel, Samuel, I want you to be my servant. Because you have been working in my house. There is a blessing that comes with working in God's house. It's called servanthood. Let's talk about Anna more. In the book of Luke, there was a woman named Anna. And the Bible says she was a prophetess, a great woman of God. The Bible says in verse 2, 37, she departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayer. And then the Bible says she did it night and day. She worked so for God that it got his attention. God could not ignore her fasting and her praying, and she did it day and night. God told Mary she was going to have a child, and his name would be Jesus. She took him to the temple to be blessed as a little baby boy. Jesus had just been born, and the people did not know Jesus was God. The Bible says, when Anna saw Jesus, she said, this is the Lord. She looking at a little baby, and she says, this is the Lord. Then Anna did something which was surprising. She went out and told others that redemption was in Jerusalem, and that Jesus Christ the prophet that the people had been waiting on, he had arrived. And God said to Anna, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Let's speak about one more man. I believe many of us have heard about a man called David. David had a unique understanding of the presence of God. David believed this. God's presence dwells in the Lord's house 24 hours a day. And here's the proof of that. David knew this and said in Psalms 8410, 
if I have to be a doorkeeper, though I am a king, I would rather be a servant to be in the presence of God. David knew God's presence dwelleth in the Lord's house 24 hours a day. David said, I would rather be a servant than a king if I could just be in the presence of the Lord. To be in the presence of God, your life is before you and not behind you. When you are called to be a servant, you must do the assignment that has been given to you for today. You cannot do an assignment that was assigned to you five years ago because the people that God wanted you to speak to, the things you were to do five years ago, some of those people may have moved away or gone or something could have happened. But right now, the people that God wants you to deal with might be sitting right in front of you. God said, in order to be a servant of mine, you must do what I called you to do today. You may think you're only here to work, but God said, you're here to serve. You're here to be a servant. To be successful, to be successful in the world, you must learn how to live with your friends. To be successful in this world, you must learn how to live with your enemies. And believe it or not, to be successful in this world, you must learn how to live with yourself. Because in yourself, you will find many faults and shortcomings. When you are a servant, that means you have been given an assignment to help others. A servant is the one that people look for when they need help. Like a police officer, when someone is breaking into your house, you look for a servant, like a police officer, to help you. When your house is on fire, you look for a servant to help put your fire out. It's called a policeman. It's called a fireman. When you are having trouble and you need medical attention, you look for a doctor or a nurse to help you because they're serving. When you are a servant in the church, God created us and we are his property. He owns us and we must do his will. When you are a servant of the Lord, you are in position for reality of God's blessing in your life. I'm going to say that again. When you are a servant of the Lord, you are in position for the reality of God's blessing in your life. What he promised, he will do. Never waste time leaving your future in your past. You may have been damaged in the past, but not destroy. So what do we do when we have been damaged in the past but not destroyed? God said for me to tell you, get up and start again. Every person has been created by the thought of God. The purpose of your call is referred to as the call of God. Your calling is your mission in life. Bishop Wagner said, the test of a good leader is his or her ability to move their followers beyond their path. You are called for the future, not the past. And there's only one way into the future. It's called Forward March. Hebrews 13, 17. Obey them that have a rule over you and submit yourself, for they watch for your soul as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. When God assigns a leader over you, you are to obey that leader. 
God said, for he has put that leader over you to watch over your soul. So that makes that leader an extremely important person if God puts them over you because they're to watch over for your soul. The Bible says that leader does it with joy and not with grief. That means that that leader that God assigns over you is a gracious, happy person. Now, everyone is given a gift. Romans eleven twenty nine, 29. For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. He gives everyone a gift. The first thing you must do is pray to God to see what your gift is. When you are called to be a servant of God, you must pray to God to see what gift have you given me, God? Because when you receive a gift from God, you receive power from God. Heaven is controlled by the earth. When you have been given a gift from God, you receive power from God. Matthew 16, 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. When you are called by God to be a servant, he gives you a greater power than you can comprehend. And every servant of God is given power by God. The way we walk before God on the earth is just a rehearsal to teach us how we will walk before God in heaven. What you don't understand when you have power from God is just a rehearsal. Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before man that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Pray for the direction of your life. Isaiah 55, 6. Seek you the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Bishop Wagner said, God's will must become your will to operate on the earth. When you are a servant of God, you take your will and set it on the shelf. And you'll go by God's will. Bishop Wagner said, God's will must become your will. And then you are a servant of the Lord. You are his heart's desire. God not only knows you can do what he calls you to do. He hopes you will do what he calls you to do. And the greatest call you can get on the earth is to be called to be a servant of God. The greatest call that you can get on this earth is being called to be a servant of God. People believe that they can do for God whatever they want to do for God. God has a specific assignment for each and every one of us. You cannot perform an, ass an assignment that not God never gave you. You must pray and seek the mind of God to see what your gift is. What many people do not understand, when God calls you to be a servant, you have been chosen by God to spend time with him. Because in order for you to know his assignment and what to do, God has to get up off of the throne of glory and come down to you and spend time with you and to tell you your purpose because you have been called to servitude. You have been hand chosen by God to spend time with him. 
When we do for God what we want God want to do for God, instead of what God wants us to do for him, God says, Matthew 7, 23, and then I will profess, profess unto them, God will tell them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you to do the service that I ordained before the foundation of the world for you to do. When you know the gift of God for you, it's time to move to servanthood. Those of you who say, I do not want to be a servant. I have other plans. I have chosen a different future. I don't want to be a servant. I have one question I want to ask you. Are you better than Jesus? Jesus served mankind. Mark eleven forty five. For even the Son of Man came not to minister unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. The Bible says that Jesus did not come to be served, but he came to serve. Are you better than Jesus? There's a song that I heard a man by the name of Luther Barnes sing one day. And Luther Barnes in the song said, I am half a man. He explains in that song that he made some great accomplishments in his life. He explains in that song that he was not a servant of, if he was not a servant of God, he would only be half a man. He also stated, it's a mighty good thing to be chosen by God. It's a mighty good thing to be chosen to serve. Don't ever complain when God calls your name. Though the job may seem hard, you'll get a special reward when you're chosen by God. And he says, as long as he doesn't do God's assignment, he says, I'm only half a man. Sometimes you will be given an assignment directly from the Almighty God. <clears throat> Sometimes you will be given an assignment from the pastor of the church that God has assigned over you. There are some that say when they hear their assignment, I am not qualified to do that assignment. Most of us know our shortcomings even when others think that we can do something great. And so we say to God, Lord, I know my shortcomings and I'm not qualified to be a servant. There was a man by the name of Moses, Exodus 33 and 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. God said to Moses in verse 13, Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. When God said that to Moses, Moses said, I'm having challenges with this. When you are called to be a servant of God, you do not know how great that call is. Verse 11. Moses said, I'm having some challenges with this. This is a great call. Lord, are you sure you're calling me to this? And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Exodus 4.11, Moses said, but I am slow of speech and of slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, who made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb or the deaf or the seeing or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, 
and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. God knew Moses' weaknesses, but he also knew Moses' strength. God knows your weakness when he calls you, but he also knows your strength. When he calls you, he cannot make the wrong decision. When he calls you, you have been called into servanthood. In Samuel 16, 7, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the heart. There's something in the heart of you that God sees that says you're his servant. Even if you're, you yourself do not believe you are qualified to do work for God, if God calls you, he has qualified you. Those who obey his will would not only be rewarded, those who do not obey his will will be punished. I'm going to say that again. Those who obey his will will one day be rewarded. Those who do not obey his will will be punished. God said, you have been bought with a price. You are not your own. You are my servant. You have been chosen for servant. 1 Corinthians 7.22 For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's freeman. God says, when I call you, though you are a servant, you're free. Likewise, also he that is called being free is Christ's servant. When you are free, God says, you are my servant. You are bought with a price. Be not ye the servant of men. God says, I've called you to be my servant. And you're free. In the Bible, there's a prophet by the name of Paul. And Paul said, we are to be servants of the Lord, but I'm going to take it to another level. Not only am I God's servant, but Paul said, I'm going to also be his prisoner. Ephesians 3.1 For this call, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Paul says, not only God will I be your servant, but I'll be your prisoner. And God said to Paul, you were born to be a servant. Welcome to servanthood. Luke 16, 13. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. God is saying, not only must you support him and no other God, but he's also saying, you must support the pastor that I have ordained at that church and not another. You can not only serve God, but you must serve the pastor God has chosen and you put in the midst of your church and you must do the assignment that is set before you. Jesus said, even though you are Christ's servant, you are a free man. And those who fulfill their assignment that I have given unto them, God says this, you cannot, he said to me, Larry, there's no way that people can do more for me than I can do for them. When you do a great assignment and do all that God has called you to do, and you say, this is overwhelming. God said, you cannot do more for me than I'll do for you. Your reward in serving me is great. And I have prepared a reward for you. Because you are a servant, got to be paid. God said you must be paid. 
Many people desire titles. They desire glory. And they desire greatness in this world. The title king, the title queen, the title president, and the church, the title pastor, the title under shepherd, the title deacon, the title deacon, and after deacon, the title teacher. And they want these titles in the church because they're looking for glory. But God told me to tell you this. The only title that a saint should desire is to be a servant. The only title that a saint should desire is to be a servant. Matthew 25, 21. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord, thy good and faithful servant. The only title that a saint should desire is to hear God on that day say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. 2 Timothy 4 a henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not only me, but unto all them also that love his appearance. In one day, you will move from servant to king, and in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Your name will go from book of service to book of life. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, thank you today for listening to me. As I stated, that there's the significance of servanthood is to be called by God because he has laid up a place for you in his kingdom. God bless you and thank you. Today, for those of that are listening, we would like for you to donate and to give to Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church. The information should be on the bottom of the screen and you can donate and Mount Calvary will appreciate any and whatever donation that you give. May God bless you and thank you.